Good morning. Wanted to talk to you today about a uh, pest in the garden. Now, I am not a gardener. I'm a novice, but I am a pest control guy, and I have been since the 1970s when my parents moved into old houses and fixed them up, and then we moved. But anyway, I wanted to show you. We've got some aphids in the corn, as young as they are, <laughs> dirty varmints. And I, was, I thought I saw some here. You can see the damage that they're creating. And I'm looking for, I saw some earlier. Um, you see here? See if I can turn one of these leaves over and find them. Well, I may have. Let's find these aphids. See here this damage? If you can see, right where my pinky is, there's a little light green dot. And those, sure enough, are aphids. Now, there are a lot of different species for aphids, and frankly, you have to have a microscope to figure them out. But it doesn't matter because a, a pest is a pest is a pest when it comes to your home and your, and your lawn and your garden. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to treat these plants. Some people don't like that idea, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go all natural and lose my crop after putting so much work in it for these boys. Um, somebody wants to go all natural, they can stop shaving their armpits and do whatever they want to do, but we're going to take care of them. Now the way I'm going to do it is I had been using malathion on my plants but you know malathion is a petroleum base and I'm not real comfortable putting petroleum on plants and then letting them sit in the sun as it to me it just doesn't sound like a good idea so I use bifenthrin quite a bit when I do pest control because it's a good product and it doesn't smell and it's got a high LD, which means lethal dose, has an ILD for humans. And uh, reading the label and studying the product, it has no known phytotoxicity, which means the plant doesn't absorb po the poisonous part, part of the product. So when you use bifenthrin, B-I-F-T-H-R, E N, I believe, um, in professional in professional circles, the the brand name is Talstar, but um, I don't know that you can get that at Lowe's or Home Depot. But uh, Bifenthrin is the the chemical name, and it's a good product. So, uh, having read the label, my um, 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 my conclusion is if you add one or two teaspoons to a gallon of water then that will be enough to kill the aphids on your plants and not pass along any negative effects to the plant and the fruit or the vegetable that it produces so what I'm gonna do is let me grab this gun this spray gun and I'm gonna show you how to spray these things it's going to be difficult with one hand, but I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to make it happen, Captain. So what you do is you want to spray. You want to get these leaves that I've put down because I'm almost certain that's where they came from. Okay, then I've sprayed the top of these these leaves, and then I'm going to turn my, my wand under, and I'm going to get the bottom of these plants because that's where the where the aphids are. They hide on the bottom, um, keeps, the, keeps the birds from seeing them, keeps them out of the sunlight. And that's, what we, that's the way you do that. Get the top, get the bottom, don't overspray. Um, and just get it wet. And as long as that aphid touches any molecule of that product, of that pesticide, 
it may not kill him right away, but it will kill him within 24, 48 hours. Um, the, in Florida, where I live, the label is the law, so you can't overmix. You can undermix, you can't overmix, but if by some chance you accidentally overmixed your product, then it'll kill those aphids faster and they'll eat less. But I'm not telling you to do that. So, anyway, we've got aphids in the garden, and the good thing I'm a pest control guy because I know how to treat them. Um, I'll probably treat the tomatoes as well, and probably the beans down there. So, anyway, that's the message for this morning. Listen, this is all about the grandkids. You know, grandkids, kids, period need to understand where their food comes from whether it be whether it be meat whether it be their vegetables and the greatest thing you can do for your kids or one of the greatest things that you can do for your kids is to go outside and experiment with a garden let them grow something uh, radishes are very easy to grow uh, but kids don't eat radishes so take some time Put a little work in it and see if you can get your kids interested in growing their own food. Uh, don't forget to hit like, where is it? Hit like, uh, subscribe, share, all of that stuff. And listen, let's, let's create a generation of children that know how to grow their own food, even with the airplanes flying over.